Hey everyone, Joey here, and today we're going to do a full setup guide for PCSX2 on PC so that you can play your favorite PS2 games. Now right off the bat, before we actually start the setup, you're obviously going to need PlayStation 2 games, of course. I would simply suggest creating a ROMs folder somewhere on your PC, and then inside of that, create a PS2 folder. And you can put this anywhere you want, but that's where we're going to put our PS2 games. Now as far as finding the games yourself, the ROMs GitHub usually is a pretty good resource, but they only have ISO formatted files, and you would want CHD formatted for the space saving. So instead, the PS2 redump on archive.org is your best option, and they are all CHD formatted. Just remember to be logged in so that you can download anything. There's nothing wrong with ISO formatted ROMs, if that's what you have, they're just larger than CHD. Now for BIOS, which is something you're going to need as well, it's system files to emulate the PS2, you're going to want the PS2-0230A-2008-0220 bin file. And thankfully, that is right on that ROMs GitHub website, if you search for BIOS files. Now just grab that one as a download, and make sure that you extract it so you can get the bin file. And then what I personally like to do is create a BIOS folder inside of that ROMs folder we created earlier, and then just put that BIOS file right inside of that BIOS folder. Okay, so we have our games, we have our BIOS files. Let's head over to the PCSX2.net website, and we're gonna download the latest stable. Now you wanna pick the option for your operating system, for Windows, the difference between installer and download is that download comes as a zip and installer as an exe. I think in most cases you can just grab the download option like I do, and then you can just move that to wherever you want. So if you're following me, I did download, right click, extract all, and now you're going to see a folder, and inside of that folder is the emulator. You can move this PCSX2 folder anywhere you want, doesn't matter. If you prefer to make an emulators folder somewhere on your drive and you put it in there, it's up to you. Let's head inside and we're going to open the PCSX2-QT-EXE to launch the emulator. You can change the language now if you want, or you can change the theme to something else, but I'll be leaving them as default. Go ahead and click next. We now need to tell PCSX2 where our BIOS file or files are. And remember, we created that BIOS folder and we put it inside of there. So just navigate to that folder and select it. And if you did it correctly, you should see it show up. Go ahead and click next. Now we have to do the same thing, except this time we have to tell PCSX2 where our games are. So navigate to your PS2 ROMs folder and select it. It's going to ask if you want to search for any subfolders inside of that folder. And we didn't set it up that way, so we don't need to. Go ahead and click next. At this point, the emulator is asking what are we using for controls, and it defaults to keyboard and mouse, and nobody wants that. If you have your controller connected to your PC, click automatic mapping, and you should see it there. I have an Xbox controller connected, and it is labeled as X input controller, SD0, so I'm gonna select that. You're now gonna see it's mapped to that controller, so click next. Then we can just click finish. PCSX2 should now load all of your games and you should see them in a nice list. But before we do anything, let's head over to settings and then interface at the top to change some settings. First things first, I don't like confirm shutdown. It's just gonna ask you whenever you exit a game, are you sure you want to do that? I don't need you to tell me that, so gonna uncheck this. I also want my games to start in full screen, so I enable start full screen. Head over to game list on the left and if you ever move your games folder, or maybe you have games in different spots, you can add or remove folders here. Head over to BIOS on the left, and it's the same sort of idea. If you ever move that BIOS folder, or maybe you have some European or Asia PS2 games, you're gonna need BIOS specifically for those regions, so you can just check that it shows up here if you put it into that folder. Head over to emulation now on the left, and if you're finding that 200% fast forward speed isn't enough, you can adjust that here to higher. Otherwise, enable cheats so that we can use cheats. Now let's go over to the graphics tab on the left, and by default, PCSX2 will automatically select the renderer. 
And I would leave that as default here. And I would change that on a per game basis. And I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. For adapter, you wanna make sure that it's choosing your dedicated GPU, whatever graphics card you're using. So just choose the drop down, and you can select it from here if you want. Now at the bottom, there is an option called apply widescreen patches. And you can enable this globally if you want, or I would suggest doing it on a per game basis. Basically what this will do is because the PS2 was a four by three aspect ratio and you are likely playing on a 16 by nine or better, it will add patches that makes it look better on a 16 by nine display. So I would suggest doing this on a per game basis. Aspect ratio is another spot where some games support 16 by nine. So you can change that here, but again, let's do this on a per game basis. Head over to the rendering tab and depending on how powerful your PC is, you can upscale the resolution. I know that my PC can handle 1080p or higher, which is a 3x resolution. So I'm gonna set that here globally, but you might wanna do this on a per game basis as well in case you run into an issue with a game that maybe you can't upscale. Head over to the texture replacement tab and select load textures. This is necessary if you plan on using any HD texture packs, and I'm gonna be showing you that later. If you're ever not sure where those packs go, it tells you right at the bottom, the folder. Okay, now let's head over to memory cards on the left, and this is important. The default memory cards are gonna fill up right away after saving in a few games, and it's just gonna get full, and that's gonna be annoying. Instead, let's choose create, and we're going to choose folder. Folder is basically unlimited saves. There's no downside, and it is perfect for this. Give it a name, and I'm gonna be kind of an original here. I'm just gonna say mem card, and then click okay. We now need to drag it up to slot one so that it can be used. Slot two will basically never ever be used in this scenario, thanks to folder being unlimited. But if you want, just create another mem card two as a folder, and then drag that up to slot two, and that way you have both slots occupied if you want. Head over to folders on the left, and if you're ever not sure where things are being saved, you can see it here. By default, PCSX2 uses My Documents on Windows, but if you're here with a different operating system, this is an easy way for you to see where things are. Lastly, we have the Achievements tab, and that's where you go to sign in with your Retro Achievements information. Click Close when done, and head back to Settings, and you're gonna see some sneaky other options here for controllers and hotkeys that weren't in the settings that we saw before. So let's click controllers. Choose controller port one on the left. Now we did the automatic mapping earlier, but you can choose it again here, top right, if you wanna double check it, or maybe you connected a different controller afterwards. You can also go through and map things yourself or double check that it's correct. Just click a mapping and push the button on your controller and it should match if you did it correctly. Head over to hotkeys now and there's some hotkeys that are super useful, of course. The first is open pause menu. That's to open the in-game pause menu and I like having that as L3 plus Y. For toggle fast forward, I like to have it as L3 plus R2. Scroll down and for save state, I like to have it as L3 plus R1 and load state as L3 plus L1. Scroll down and toggle on-screen display I like as L3 plus B. Click close when done, and now let's look at per game settings. So right click a game and choose properties. Any changes that you make in this window is only going to apply to this specific game. So all the things we talked about before with widescreen and renderer and all that stuff, you can do all of that here in these menus on a per game basis. But let's head over to the patches tab and you can see some games will have widescreen patches here to enable them individually. Or sometimes there's 60 FPS patches that you can enable too. And there might be other patches as well. So it all depends on the game and you'll see them all here. At this point, let's go ahead and boot up a game. And the very first thing that you're gonna be greeted with if you try and save in a game is it's gonna ask you to format the memory card. And you do wanna do that so that you can use the memory card, but you'll never be asked to do that ever again. Now, if we use the hotkey for the pause menu, you're going to see the in-game menu. Game properties is where you can go to do per game settings while in the game. 
So it's the same sort of idea like the window we looked at just a few minutes ago, except now we're doing it in game instead. So it's up to you. You can do things in game or outside of the game on a per game basis. Change disc is where you want to go if you want to change the disc on a multi-disc game. So maybe you finish disc one, you need to get the disc two. This is where you do it. And lastly, we have settings and these are global settings. So any changes that you make here will affect all games. Go ahead and click exit and you can exit and save state if you want or just exit without saving. All right, so at this point, let's talk about cheats. Gamehacking.org is a great website for cheats and where you can find them. I'm going to use Dragon Quest VIII as an example. So I'm going to search the website for Dragon Quest VIII, find the game page, and then I need to change the format to Panache, and then click download button to download the cheats. Let's go ahead and move that downloaded Panache file to my documents, PCSX2, cheats folder. Before we can use it, we have to rename it. So open PCSX2 and then the game that you just downloaded cheats for and head into properties again. Copy the CRC from that page and rename the Panache file to that CRC name. If you head back into properties, then cheats, then reload cheats in the bottom right, you should see all of your cheats load in. You can now enable or disable them here or you can do it in-game as well using that pause menu and the game properties menu that we talked about earlier. Then we have HD texture packs, and there is an awesome Google site that has a repository of a whole bunch of them. I'm going to head to Burnout Revenge, and there's links to threads that you can click. It'll usually bring you to the GBA Temp website, and you can sometimes see instructions in the post for what to do, or maybe there's some settings that the author recommends that you do. So just click the download link wherever it is for whatever texture pack that you want and download it. Usually it comes as a zip, so extract it. If you head inside of that folder you extracted, you should see the game's serial number as a folder. And you'll know it's the right one because if you head inside, you should see a replacements folder right inside. So what you want to do is copy that serial number folder and then head to My Documents, PCSX2, in the textures folder and paste it in there. Once that's done, boot up the game. So I'm going to boot up Burnout Revenge and I can tell instantly from the title screen that it worked and we have our HD textures. Lastly, if you want PCSX2 to look a little bit nicer, head to View and then Game Grid. This isn't what we want though. Where's the cool covers? There is a link in the description to a GitHub by X Lenore. Scroll down and you can use either URL the first one is default covers and the other one is 3D covers. I'm going to copy the default URL, head back to PCSX2, Tools, Cover Downloader, paste the URL into the field and then click Start. Let it download, head back and enjoy all of your nice covers. Now if you want to see it more consoleized, head to System, top left, Start Big Picture Mode, and if you go to Game List, you can navigate this all using your controller and it looks more like a console. Otherwise, that's really all there is to PCSX2 in setting it up, configuring it, getting you ready to play some games. We went over everything and anything that I could personally think of, and you should be able to now play anything you want on PCSX2 and use cheats, HD textures, and all that sort of thing. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.